So scientific engineering, scientific and engineering notation. You guys have dealt with scientific notation before in science class, most likely, right? Somewhat. So, what do you know about scientific notation? Big numbers made small. Big numbers made small. It's usually in the form of a times ten to the power of b, right? is usually the form it ends up in. So if I had a larger number, let's say I had 42,850. What is that going to be in scientific notation? Okay, so what we do in scientific notation is the number in front of the decimal place when we're done. So this A is going to be a single digit. So what we're going to have to do is move this decimal place until we get that. So we move it one, two, three, four places to get just a single digit in front of the decimal, right? <laughs> so we're going to have 4.285 times 10, because that's the format we deal with. And how many places did we move it? Four. We moved it four places forward, so that's going to be 10 to the power of 4. We're not going to start worrying about significant digits, all that other stuff. Right now we're just dealing with scientific and engineering notation. So if I had a decimal, I'm going to go the other way. Let's say that I had 0 .00003378. It also can make small numbers a little more. So if I'm dealing with that, I'm going to go ahead and move my decimal place. I want one number in front of the decimal. So this time I'm moving it backwards one, two, three, four, five places to get a number, right? So I'm going to go ahead and end up with 3.78 times 10 to the, what do you think I'm going to do for my exponent? Negative 5, because I have to move it 5 places backwards. So let's go ahead and do one more that I let you guys go ahead and do a little more of the work on. So let's go ahead and say we had 850 million. So what's the number going to be? 8.5 times 10 to the 8. To the 8, you're saying? Yes. Okay, and the way we do that is we'd go ahead and do this in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I usually do that with my finger when I'm doing it, calculating it somewhere. There's that one. Let's go ahead and do one more with a bunch of zeros in the front so you guys can deal with the negative, negative one. So if I've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, some people do 2.0 times 10 to the negative 9. Does it really matter? No. Isn't it the same number? Yep. Now you can think of these. If you take 10 to the power of 4, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that gives me 10,000, right? So 4 times 10,000 would give me my 40,000. So it's the same thing. You can do the math and figure out what that number is. It's just putting it in a simpler way so it takes up less space. Engineering notation is going to be a little bit different, but pretty close to the same thing. Am I going too quick through this? Okay. Engineering notation. What engineering notation is leading up to is it's leading up to using SI prefixes. What are SI prefixes? Think metric. Uh, kilogram. Kilo. Kilo. Uh, Milla would be an SI prefix. Mega. Giga. Think of your computers. A micro, all those are SI prefixes. So, those main ones that we use on the SI prefixes are multiples of three. So we're going to look for our exponents. These ones out here would be multiples of three each time. That way they easily go into those SI prefixes. So if I'm doing engineering notation, I'm going to do the same number. So if I've got the same 42,850, the way that I'm going to go ahead and do that is I'm going to look at it first of all. Since we're dealing with sets of three, 
That means in front of our decimal, we can have one to three numbers. It doesn't matter. Anything between one and three numbers. So if I go ahead and look at this, I've got five numbers. So I've got to chop some of those off, right? So if I go ahead and take off sets of three, one, two, three, if I move my decimal place to there, I've got two numbers in front of my decimal place. That's perfectly acceptable because we're doing engineering notation. So this is going to be 42.85 times 10 to the third, because I moved them, it's a number greater than zero, it's not a decimal, I moved them that way, that's 10 to the third. Let's say that I've got this number then, so I've got 0 0.00037 So same thing here, except for now I'm dealing with negative once again, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start out, I have to go ahead and have a number in front of the decimal place, I don't have that. And then do three. So one, two, three. Do I have a number in front of my decimal place yet? No. So I'm going to do another three. One, two, three. So there I've got two numbers, right? Is that okay? Yeah. With engineering notation, it's okay. We want one to three different numbers in front of the decimal. So this is going to equal 37.8 times 10. What's my exponent going to be? Negative six. Negative six, because I had to move six places. Six good. Times 10 to the negative 6. Engineering notation making sense so far? Just multiples of 3 is the main difference between that and the scientific. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'm going to have 850 million again. And once again, how, what's that one going to be? I'll let you guys do a little bit of work, the work this time. Because if we moved to nine places, it'd be 0.85. So they did one, two, three, one, two, three. They had three digits. We can have one to three digits in front of the decimal place. So they said, oh, I'm between one and three. I'm good. I've got 850 times 10 to the sixth because we moved to six places. This one's going to actually end up exactly the same, right? Because that's already a multiple of three. So I don't even need to worry about all that. That's going to equal out to... 2 or 2.0, whatever you want to go ahead and do, I'm going to leave it at 2, times 10 to the negative 9. Like I said, that's all leading up to going ahead and dealing with SI prefixes. I do have a chart up here for the SI prefixes. I'm also going to go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint and show you that slide so that you see the SI prefixes. You'll probably want to put that in your notes eventually or print off that page like that so you can have that in your notebook. But let's say we're dealing with, let's say that this was uh, ohms of resistance that we had. So 10 to the power of 3 is going to be what? What's the SI prefix for 1,000? Kilo. Kilo, yep. So we'd go ahead and say that that was 42.85 kilo ohms. What about to the negative 6? Anyone have any clue? So negative 3 is mil, all right. So then the next step is micro. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to put all this up here, but we go milla, micro, nano, pico, femto is the order we're going to go. So micro, let's say that this was farads that we're dealing with. So that would end up giving us 37.8 micro farads. It's got a funky little symbol. That chart will once again show that to you. To the power of six. That one, some of you guys are going to know. Mega. Mega. Think of computers. You go kilobytes, megabytes. So this one's going to be 850. And we can go ahead and uh, let's say that we're dealing with ohms again. So mega ohms. And to the negative nine, I told you, is nano. So that would be two. And whatever we decide to label it. So, once again, the SI prefixes are separate from engineering notation. Don't think just because you do engineering notation that you have to do SI prefixes. So I actually taught three different concepts. I've got or scientific notation, engineering notation, and then SI prefixes. This is just a step to get there. Do you guys have questions on any of those three topics?
You think you got the basic concept? Yep. 